Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda here from Visualize DNZ. Uh, recently I posted some photos on Instagram of some coffee dyed paper that I'd made using the bubble technique. Um, I can't remember who I learned this from, but I'll search back through my YouTube watch list and see if I can link the video to where I learned this from. Um, it's a super cool little technique. It produces really cool results. Um, actually, I should have grabbed out some of the ones I just did. Um, I don't know where I put them. Okay, so we can't do that. I'll just have to show you what I do during this video. Uh, I don't know how this video is going to do because I need to get over and blow, which means my head's going to be in the camera. Um, not sure how it's going to work, so let's just go with it and see what happens. So, because I've just done coffee dyeing, I didn't really want to do coffee dyeing before and I wanted to try something a little bit different. And I haven't done it this way before. So instead of coffee, and you could use tea as well, I'm using food colouring. So in here I've got three quarters of a cup of water. If you're doing coffee, then I suggest you start with boiling water just to get that coffee dissolved and really going. Um, and I've got a teaspoon of food colouring. And then about half a teaspoon of dishwashing liquid. And that's it. So you don't need those quantities. Play around with the strength that you like. But I thought some people might like to know quantities. So I measured it out this morning. And tested it to make sure that it was giving me a result that I liked. And it was all good. So that's three quarters of a cup of cold water if you're doing food colouring hot or boiling water if you're doing coffee uh, just to get the coffee activated so don't blow it while it's hot um, but just to get that coffee all dissolved um, or tea to steep your tea if you're using tea uh, a teaspoon of food coloring or I usually use about two tablespoons of a cheap dark coffee um, but again you can play around with quantities and then around about half a teaspoon of dishwashing liquid now I didn't actually measure it, I just tipped it up and thought yeah that's about half a teaspoon. Um, add more or less, you know start with less and add a bit more if it's not bubbly enough for you. Um, I keep mine in the fridge once I've done a, a session, so for the coffee I store it in the fridge with a lid on. And like the, I just did it yesterday, a batch yesterday and the coffee solution I used was from like three months ago. And it was perfect. It was fine. It even still had enough bubbliness to it. Although I did add a touch more water and uh, dishwashing liquid to it just in case. And if you have too low a volume, um, then it's harder to get your bubbles to, to raise up. Um, also, if your container is too big, you're going to have um, difficulty getting those bubbles up. So any container really, I make sure I do it in one where I can put a lid on it and store it in the fridge for next time. Because rather than doing like a new solution every time, if the coffee one goes off or goes mouldy or something, I'll throw it out and start again. But it's going really well so far. So the other thing is it does splatter when you do this process. Um, so wear old clothes. Coffee and tea, not so critical because that will wash out. Uh, but definitely with food colouring, make sure you're wearing something that you don't care if it gets uh, little splatters of colour on it. Just in case it won't come out. Food colouring should come out, but just to be on the safe side. You will also end up with some on your face. It will splatter up into your face, so be aware of that. And with food colouring, you're also going to get it on your fingers. So you might want to wear gloves. Again, it, it will come off possibly over time, I don't know, I haven't tested it that far, um, but just be aware of that and grab yourself something under your your paper that you're working on. So sheets of paper like I've got, um, an old like picnic tablecloth, an old sheet, an old towel, just something to protect your work surface um, and everything around so that it doesn't get completely splattered, which Reminds me, I've got a pile of journal things here I've got on the go, and so I'm moving those out of harm's way. Now, I've also prepared, I've got this one here which is red, it looks a bit pink, but it's actually red food colouring, and I've got this one which is green. Um, I might start with the green actually. 
I don't know why, just because. Um, it feels a bit Christmassy, but that wasn't my intention. It was just random. So let's get to the process. And as I said, I'm going to end up, I think, with my head in the frame. Um, and I won't be able to talk while I'm doing this because you need to blow. <laughs> like you need to blow through a straw. So you do need a straw. I use uh, metal straws and when I'm finished I just pop them in the dishwasher and they're all good to go, not a problem. Um, and you need paper, any paper you like that you want to colour up that you want to add some interest to. So I've just got some sheets of full scap uh, copy weight paper here that was given to me I believe by my mum after she finished doing Bible in schools. She had a lot of supplies and she gave them to me and so I've like I've had this paper for, I don't know, 15 years plus. Um, I've used little bits, but it kind of just got stuck in a file and filed away. So I've, I've found it and I'm going to use it. So I'm going to colour it up. So I think that's enough talking. You're probably ready for some action. I know I am. I'm keen to give this a go. Uh, so blow. And as you blow, tap your paper on the bubbles as they rise to the surface. Now when you blow, like so, you want to put your paper on straight away uh, because it's the bubbles that carry the colour up. And as the bubbles pop, you'll get these circular patterns. But if you wait, the colour actually starts flowing down the bubbles. And so if I dipped now, I'd get very little colour because it's, it drains off very quickly off the rounded bubbles. So you need to do it basically as soon as you've blown the bubbles and they're up the top, um, you want to, to lay the paper on. Right, so I think that's the last instruction. I'm going to go for it and um, yeah, let's see what we get with this green food colouring. So I'm going to bring it right close, as close as I can. Also be aware if you're leaning down, um, do get a bit of a sore neck if you do quite a lot of it. I've got a big thick book underneath to try and lift it up a bit, but I've still got to bend forward. And it, it, I find it does hurt my neck. But anyway, just another little warning. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over. I'm just going to move my pottle away for a moment. And see the bubbles? Can you see the bubbles there? Um, so they will pop, and as they pop, they're going to leave little rings of colour. So I'm just going to wait for them. to. You can help them pop if you want, but letting them pop on their own means the colour is draining off the top and onto your paper. So I generally do a bit like this. If I see a spot where I've missed, I'll just go in and sort of aim it over top of the puddle and go again see pop pop they're popping and leaving this wonderful wonderful pattern behind you see that isn't that awesome just such fun just a really fun way to color up your paper to get away from being white and still leave you with a surface that is perfectly writable like you can easily write on that not a problem or you can further decorate it, add pockets, you know, whatever you like. You could tear it in for collage. Um, so many uses. So I do a page like that and then I pop it aside to dry a little bit. So I'll do another one. Shall I do a red one just so you can see um, what the different colours are going to look like? Because I'm not going to do a whole batch on video because I think <laughs> that would be really weird. Of me just sitting here blowing bubbles um, and you watching so maybe I'll do a few but I'm not gonna do heaps right I'll, I'll save that for off camera right here we go again Okay, 
So as you're doing it, you can kind of see it coming through on the other side. You can see where it's hitting. Um, and I've got ink all over my fingers. That was a really messy, wet session. Um, so you can leave the other side and just have a little bit of bleed through from this side once it's dry and that can be really effective too and really pretty. I typically do both sides though. So once these are dry, well dryish to a point where they're dry enough, um, I'll flip them over and then I'll do the other side as well. Uh, but if I flick this over now, you can see how some of the colours come through. And I haven't done this with food colouring, like I said before. So this actually might be nice just left like that. And let's check what the green one looks like on the other side. So actually they're really cool. And I think they would be fine left exactly like that. So with food colouring, it may only be necessary to do one side, which means you get more paper done in the same space of time, which is super cool. Now these have not been saturated, they haven't been dunked, so they haven't been fully immersed in liquid. So they do dry a lot quicker than traditional coffee dyeing methods where you dunk them in a coffee solution. Um, it's quite a cold day here, it's drizzling on and off. Um, so these will take a bit longer to dry than my coffee dyeing did yesterday where I had the sunlight coming through the window. And I was popping them down at my feet where the sun was hitting the floor and stacking them up as they got sort of touch dry and then they finished drying under my desk um, as I kept working because I've only got you know this much space to work so I could only do I think four or five sheets at a time uh, before I needed to pause and wait for them to dry enough to pop under the desk but they do they do dry quick and even on a day like today then they're, they're not going to take forever to dry um, but that is the bubble method of dyeing paper. Um, I love doing the coffee dyeing method. It's just super satisfying, pretty patterns, different every time. Um, and I love that they don't take long to dry. You don't need to use an oven or a heat gun. Um, the sun helps, definitely helps if you've got a nice warm day. But even on a cold day, they will just air dry fine and they won't take very long so I'm going to do a couple more maybe one each of each color um, just so you can see some dif differentiation between how they turn out every time so going in for some more blowing here hope my head's not uh, covering your complete view Okay, another thing you can do is the colour collects around the rim of your container so you can let the bubbles go down and let the paper fall onto the rim and it's going to create a firmer line which is quite cool because you end up with big sort of circle lines so I might try that with the green just to show you that um, alright so I'm just going to switch out containers here Push my, I'm getting a lot of red on my fingers um, but didn't seem to get much green on my fingers. Right, grab another sheet of paper. Just pop this one further away. And I don't know if you can see, but there's red, certainly red splatters all around on my paper. Oh, having trouble grabbing a piece of paper. Here we go. Right, in we go again. got green on my fingers that time right 
Oops, I can't put that. There's no room to put that beside me. Right. So just letting the bubbles pop here. Pop, pop, pop. And this is fun. It's just very relaxing watching bubbles and the rainbow colours. And I see the little circle from the, the circle um, light above the camera uh, reflected in the bubbles, which is kind of fun. So you can kind of see where I let it rest on the rim of the container. Um, it didn't turn out as well as some of the coffee ones done. Um, maybe I just haven't blown enough bubbles that hasn't built up that colour on the edge. But you can kind of see the big circle around here. And I did it again. There's another one here. I did it three times. So this is one here. You sort of get the, the outline of the big circle. And then this one was a circle as well, I think. Uh, so you kind of get those big circles and then the little circles in between. So those actually seem to be a lot more muted, a more, lot less defined. So maybe I had a bit much water or maybe, yeah, I don't know. don't know. It's all, like I said, having tried the food colouring. Uh yeah, I'm still going to get circles, but it seems to be a lot less defined in the circles, unlike the coffee. I do need to find a coffee one to show you. Here we go. So I see sort of more defined lines. So here's one where I let it sit on top of the, the bowl. So I used a bigger bowl for the coffee dyeing. And that's where I let it sit on the rim. Um, but I get even darker lines than that if there's coffee build up. Um, but I don't know if you can see how defined the bubbles are on this. And so I think perhaps the body of the coffee affects how it works rather than the food colouring which is all liquid to begin with. Um, so maybe more dishwashing liquid or maybe less water. I don't know. And play around with it I don't actually mind I think it's still really interesting the effect I don't mind that they're not as defined I think it's still perfectly cool uh, this one's got some sort of more defined bubbles um, showing up so there we go there is this technique it's a lot of fun it's very very playful it's um, enjoyable it's quick it's easy you don't need a lot of space, a lot of equipment or expensive things. I mean, you can pick up food colouring for, for quite cheap. And I've only got cheap food colouring. I haven't got expensive food colouring. Um, and you can get some really, really cool effects. And the cheap coffee. Like, I buy a pack of coffee for $1.19, I think it was. It might be $1.39, something like that. So really cheap to get great results. Um, I can't tell you how many tea bags because I haven't used this method with um, tea dyeing. But just however many tea bags you get, you need to get the colour that you want. Uh, I did go quite strong with the colouring in these uh, because I wanted that that colour. So maybe this is too much food colouring. Maybe that's why the, it isn't as defined because I'm getting too much colour picked up. Don't know. I can always add some more water and see what happens. So there we go. That's a funny little video. I hope my head is not completely blocking you of you in, during that process as I was blowing the bubbles. Um, thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful. And I'd love if you gave it a go. Have some fun with it. And oh, one other thing before I go. You can double colour. Like once these are dry you can go in with um, a second colour. Or you could do your coffee dyeing and then go in with a colour over top. Actually, why don't I do that? I was going to go, but no. Let's do some green on this coffee dyed one. Why not? Why not? Okay. I might try just do one side. Ah, we'll see. I'll do one side on camera anyway. Right, 
so I didn't want to go like completely all over I just wanted to accent the coffee dyeing and I think that's rather fun oh I can smell the coffee mmm yum um, which reminds me I've got a coffee tucked in under the edge of my paper here let me have a wee sip so there we go you can double layer so once it's dry enough you can go in with a food coloring or some other coloring I mean you could use anything just be aware of the splatter so if you use like an ink you could end up with a stained face that won't come off so easily so I'd keep it to those things that will wash off relatively quickly so there we go we have three or four different looks really well three the food coloring the food coloring over to over top of coffee dyeing and then as you saw underneath the coffee dyeing by itself lots of fun give it a go thanks for joining me and see you in the next video bye